So session six, compasses today. What do we do with compasses? Okay, so we go through compass, the application of variation, an awareness of deviation and its causes, use of a hand bearing compass. So compasses, the basic idea is about compasses. We use the Earth's magnetic field, also known as the geomagnetic field, and is the field that extends from the Earth's interior out into space. It's basically the big magnetic field that keeps us protected from the sun and some harmful rays and things like that. But it actually also works as a magnetic compass for us. So as the Earth spins, this magnetic field turns and off it goes. The magnetic field is generated due to the currents and the motions and convections of a mixture of molten iron and nickel in outer core of the Earth that spins around. So all this melted stuff that's in our core it spins around our core is actually what causes it. While we say North and South magnetic poles are usually located near the ge geographical partners, they slowly and continuously move over geographical timescales, but sufficiently slowly for ordinary compasses to remain useful for navigation. So North Pole, the actual true North Pole and the magnetic North Pole are not the same and the same in the South. So you can see this line here, true South Pole, magnetic south pole okay our poles are the axis we spin on the magnetic north does not have that same axis and as i said is continuously moving which kind of makes sense because that the molten nickel and iron and everything inside the earth is also moving still so our compass points to magnetic north not true north so we need to make adjustments navigation adjustments between where our compass is pointing and where the North Pole is, the true North is on our charts. But our compasses are also influenced by other magnetic fields. So if you put a magnet next to a compass, it's going to influence it, isn't it? Okay. So onboard magnet, magnetic fields, moving magnets, all that sort of thing also influence our compasses. So variation, where and what is variation? That's the difference between true and magnetic north that's the variation and in different parts of the world it's completely different so variation is the difference between magnetic and true north it's always north you don't have a southerly variation it varies by location and over time so depending on where you are in the world and when you are in the world your variation will change and adjust itself all the time in most populated parts of the world it currently ranges from about 30 degrees west to 26 to 30 degrees just off New Zealand, the southern tip of New Zealand. So that goes from one side to the other. So around the world, you've got about a 60 degree difference. Okay, and I'm talking about most populated parts, I'm not talking about standing just right next to it where it's going to be wildly different. Okay, so it could be positive or negative from true north. So in other words, this would be westerly variation. This would be an easterly variation if that's true north. Some parts of the world, it changes, literally. You can sail off one area and come into another area, but I spend a morning in one and an afternoon in the other. So this is a little chart of magnetic variation around the world. The green lines being zero magnetic variation, the blue west, the red east, okay? So you can see as you work further and further and further and further away from the green, your variation increases. So down here where I am, it's around 23 to 25 degrees. In the middle of the Atlantic just here, it's around 30 degrees. As you come down here towards New Zealand, you can see it's got a much, much bigger variation. Now this is obviously unpopulated. This is very, very, very far south. But here in New Zealand, it's about 26 degrees. So you can see how it massively changes around the world. Up here in England, you're almost on the green. And the same thing with the States. It's not massive changes. You're right down the middle of the States is uh, pretty green. Down here, huge differences. So where are you in the world makes a big difference to your variation. Where do we find it? On our compass rows. There's our true north. It's always on every compass rows. And then quite often it will have an inner rose for magnetic variation that is dated to a specific year. 
our charts, it forms lines of variation on the bigger ones. Okay. So I don't know if you can actually see it on this size. It may be a little, maybe a little bit, but they look, they look like contours. And they contours of variation. So this is North Atlantic. And because it changes so considerably across the North Atlantic, literally we have lines like that look like contours and that controls your variation across the Atlantic. Okay, and they're usually in purple. Okay. Modern GPSs and electronic equipment, they'll have them. So if you've got a flux gate compass, it'll know what your variation is by knowing where you are and what the time is. So how do we get this information out of a compass rose? So here's our compass rose. There's our true north. Nice little star there. There you can see a nice little arrow coming to one side. That'll be the magnetic variation for where this compass rose is. So it's four degrees, 15 minutes west. And that was in 2009. And it changes eight minutes east every year. So that's what that information tells us. Four degrees, 15 west. That's where that comes from. And the next bit in 2009, and then in brackets, the change. So these are the magnetic variations at the date shown the compass rose was printed and the annual magnetic change thereafter. So how do we how do we extrapolate that? We want to basically look at this compass and say, okay, what is today's current magnetic variation? So what do we do? Take that same information that we took from there. What is it today? We have an eight east annual change. It tells us that. So I did this end of last year, so it still haven't changed it. So it's 11 years. So we've got 11 years by eight minutes annual change. That means it's 88 minutes of change, doesn't it? That's just a straight maths, eight years, 11 years by eight minutes, 88 minutes east change. Okay? So that's one degree and 28 minutes east change. Our base variant, where the base variation was, was going west, but it's changing back towards north. So because it's a westly variant and it's changing to the east, we would subtract the one from the other. And then we would get a variation of two degrees and 47 minutes west today or in 2020. And every single variation on every chart, unless there's almost no change happening, will give you this basic information. So you two can correct it for today. So how do I get there? Four degrees, 15 minutes west, less one degree, 28 minutes east, two degrees, 47 west. Remember, there are 60 minutes in a degree. We're not going up to 100, we're only going up to 60. 60 minutes in a degree. Remember that from earlier on? So if we look at that, one, so we could say that four degrees in 50, 15 minutes is 255 minutes in total. Four times six plus 15, one degree 60 plus 28 is equal to 88 minutes. So you could literally then just go 255 less 88 divided by 60. 167 is 60 plus 60 plus 47, isn't it? Two degrees, 47 west. So we must always work it back. That's what I'm trying to get across here. Back to 60 minutes making a degree, 60 minutes making a degree, and then whatever is left over. One thing, when we look at that, we can't split a single degree up here. So we would just round that off to the nearest number. So we would say that would be called three degrees west. If it was less than 30, we would round it up to two degrees west. Remembering that it's half of 60. It's not half of 100. Half of 60, round up one side. If it's past 30, round up the other way. So we would call that three degrees west. I mean, we can't even steer a course of a one degree change. So if you're trying to steer a one degree difference, and a half a degree difference, well, you're never going to do that. So we don't worry about it. Okay, so then what is deviation? Deviation. That's the magnetic deviation is an error incurred in a compass by a local magnetic field, which must be allowed for. So along with magnetic variation, you've of course, that's still there. So if you want to accurately calculate or steer a boat on a compass, you need to work both variation and deviation. Deviation is what's on your boat, the engine, the electrics, 
all those things that can actually build up a magnetic field. And then we actually take the boat out and we swing the compass. And we say, when the boat's pointing that way, that's where the deviation is. And when the boat's pointing this way, that's where the deviation is. And we make up the deviation card, knowing at what point of the compass and how much it is. That's for the nice fixed items on board. Not such fixed items, like somebody putting a speaker by a compass because they want to listen to music in the middle of the night, and that speaker has got a whopping great magnet in it. That will throw your compass out enormously. Engines, whether they're running or not, create a magnetic field. Electricity has a magnetic field to it. Anything in the proximity of that will swing that compass around, okay? That is magnetic. So the stainless steel frame behind and the plastic frame underneath does not affect it. It must be a ferrous metal. It can't be a non-ferrous metal. There we go. So we would take the boat, we would point it one way or the other, and we would start it at zero, and we would slowly but surely, knowing fixed points on land, we would point the boat right round all the way down to 360 degrees, and we would record the deviation on board. So as the boat changes course, the deviation changes, and we would record it. This is a deviation card, also known as swinging a compass. If you swing a compass, you're finding out what the ship's magnetic field is. You'll notice it makes a very neat curve. They pretty much always do because the engine's stable, but because of the variation in the magnetic field of the earth, it pulls the compass one way, then it pulls it the other way, okay, as the boat spins. Okay, so if we combine them both. We want to work things out. We combine both variation and deviation. Okay, so we look at it. Take variation and deviation together and we get our compass. So true north, that's on our charts. Then magnetic north, compass north, and so on and so forth round. Okay, so there's our heading. Okay, compass. Okay, deviation, magnetic, true. So deviation, variation. So you will notice that we split it. Your compass heading includes both. Your magnetic heading only includes variation and your true is obviously true. So we've got actually three different headings. Compass, magnetic, and actually true. True is the one on the chart. Magnetic, the magnetic north, is not taking into account any deviation and the compass is deviation plus very vari uh, variation it's the two together the reason we get the two together when we look at a compass on a boat and we call it compass heading is because it is a fixed unit and you can swing it and you can make one of those you can make a deviation card for it it's fixed the engine's fixed, the electrics and everything else is fixed on board. Whereas a magnetic compass, just a handheld compass, you can't make a deviation card for. Because you're going to move around the boat with it. And then you move it to another boat. And then it'll be a different deviation. So you don't make deviations for magnetic compasses, handheld compasses, only for fixed compasses. So. If you want to remember a nice acronym, True Virgins Make Dull Company at Weddings. So we've got True, our table, our chart, True. Variation, then we get Magnetic. Deviation, then we get Compass. And then we would add West. So if you, reading it like that, you would add West if you're going from True to Magnetic, or magnetic to compass. What do I mean by add west? You have a westerly and an easterly variation and deviation. You remember this? Can I go back a little bit? There's my deviation card. That's nothing, no deviation. That's a westerly deviation. That's an easterly deviation. So we need to know which way we go with west or east, whether we add or subtract it. 
So if you're going down from true variation magnetic deviation compass, you'd add west, which means you would therefore subtract east. If you're going the other way, you'd subtract west and add east. So you can look here, we've got true 120 degrees, we would add the west, so 26 degrees west, the one we just worked out, so 146 degrees magnetic. But if you had a deviation card that said 20 degrees, 6 degrees east, you would then subtract it this way around. Same here, 120 degrees. Because it's easterly, we would subtract. Because it's westerly, we would add. And as soon as we go up the other way, as soon as we go from compass to true, compass to true, we would subtract west, add east. A Portland plotter makes it easy for you. So you can just put your variation there and it'll add and subtract it. You don't need mathematics to do it with a Portland plotter. Handheld compasses, these sort of looking things. Okay. What is a marine handheld compass? It's a waterproof compass which gives you a bearing to a specific object. Note that this one has a little line there. That is what you shoot your bearing on must have accurate capabilities. So you can line that up with a lighthouse, with a buoy, with the top of a mountain. You need to be able to line up a specific point. Yeah. Land-based compasses, this one you can use because you see it's got an accurate line here. I can tell you from experience, they rust and fall to pieces in about half an hour. They're fairly useless. They don't work terribly well. Okay. This sort of thing you can't use because you can't get an accurate bearing on it. It doesn't have that nice line. Your phone may have a compass on it, but you can't line it up accurately. You need to be able to get that accurate, accurate, accurate reading. So you need something like this, this marine-based compass. You'll notice this um, phosphorescent stuff around it. You put a torch on that, you can use it at night. It glows like a watch. Like they glow bright bright you can read them easily they really are good remember handle compasses don't have deviation so there you can see it's got a line there and he's got an accurate sight to be able to take a bearing on something so a couple of things to note in this pick take careful note of the magnetic field around you remember you don't have a deviation card stand well clear of anything that you think could cause a magnetic any magnetic interference so don't sit on top of the electrics box or the switchboard or the engine. Get yourself nice and clear and away of everything so you don't have any deviation. Make sure you're steady. Trying to get a decent reading using a handheld compass if you're bouncing around is next to impossible. Take multiple readings. So if you're shooting a reading at a lighthouse, shoot it three times. So I'm shooting this lighthouse. I've got 138. Now I've got 137, now I've got 139. Okay, I'm gonna call it 138. Get someone else to write your readings down because if you're doing something like a three-point fix, the quicker you can do a three-point fix, the more accurate it's going to be, remembering that the boat is still moving while you're doing it. So having somebody else write them down rather than shooting one, putting it down, writing notes, Picking it up, shooting the next. You can get, you can go from site to site to site very quickly. Always have the compass attached to you. And you see this wrap around his wrist. You want to have the ability just to drop it and grab hold of that card rail. So you can go for that one hand for yourself, one hand for the boat immediately. Ninety percent of these things, and I go back a few, are very rubberized and can be dropped. So he's got that big rubber frame around him. It's designed. So you can just drop it and grab something. The lanyard around your neck, it's not going to get damaged, but you can grab. So always have it attached to you. They're not cheap. You don't want to throw them over the side particularly. So compasses, quite simple things, not a terribly complicated. It's just getting over that initial hurdle of understanding variation and its relation from the planet Earth to us on the boat. And then adding that deviation, what is all this electrics that's on the screen now? How much is all this electrics influence those compasses? 
you know. So that's that deviation side. Okay, so again, that's just kind of catching the scratching the surface of the compass. We do go into a bit more depth and we do a lot of exercises with it, both in the classroom and at sea. We do loads and loads of examples when we when we're sailing. Three-point fixes and a hand bearing compass is part of any exam. Any sailing exam, it's always going to be there. Um, funny enough, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, commercial vessels, if they have the ability to do a three-point fix with a hand bearing compass like that, they have to. Because of the errors with our GPS fixing and human reading and things incorrectly. Paper chart, visual navigation, passage making is definitely part of your exam. So being able to fix your position and then plot your position and a course from true on the chart up to compass and inversely from compass to ch true on your chart. So then both of those is definitely part of all the exams. And this could be an exam in the States, it could be an exam in England, South Africa, Australia, it doesn't make any difference. They all have these things in every exam. Using them. You look well cool if you do a very quick and a good three-point fix. You come up with a compass, you write three numbers down, you go down, you go plot, plot, plot on a chart, and you go, we are there. Looks very impressive. Practice it. It's great fun.